You just built the PC, congrats. I'm gonna show you what you need to do next. So what I usually do is I update BIOS, I'll get on the latest version. Then we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to install Windows. Then we're gonna run Windows updates. We're gonna install drivers for your parts. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the software and then get into BIOS to increase your RAM speed so you get those advertised speeds. And then I'm gonna show you how to kind of stress test it to make sure your parts are running as expected. All you need is a USB stick at least an eight gig one, but this one is a 32 gig SanDisk and Amazon's like $7. We're gonna use this bad boy to plug it into another computer so we can download the, the correct BIOS file for your motherboard. After we update BIOS, we're gonna go ahead and use this to create a Windows media creation tool on another computer. Also, we'll download that tool and we use this to plug into the new computer so we can install Windows on it. Let's go. If your PC is posting, which means that everything is displaying correctly on a monitor and you can get into BIOS and stuff, uh, you can still kind of keep BIOS the same, uh, the version as when it shipped. I always recommend getting up to the latest version. A lot of times there's new features or patches and stuff like that. There's a couple different ways that you can update BIOS depending on your motherboard. If you're able to get into BIOS already, then depending on your motherboard, read your motherboard's manual, how you get in and update BIOS. But if your motherboard has a BIOS flashback feature, this is really convenient because then you can update your BIOS without having a CPU in there. And all you need is a USB flash drive and then power to the motherboard. The board. I'm going to show you how you do it on this $500 gaming PC using the BIOS flashback. In order to download the BIOS file and the Windows media creation tool, you need to find another PC so you can download that stuff from. So hopefully you have another PC or laptop in your house, or you can ask a friend. And if you don't have a friend, I'll be your friend. Simply slide that USB stick on the other computer. Once you have the USB device plugged into the other computer, we're gonna go ahead and format it and erase everything off of it. So before we do that, make sure you save anything that you need off of that USB device because we're gonna format and we're gonna wipe it all clear to put the BIOS file on there. Find that USB device that you plugged in. We're gonna go ahead, right click on that and then format. And then what we wanna do is we wanna do a FAT32 and then we're gonna go ahead and just label it quick format, click start. And then we're gonna erase everything. I have everything saved. Format complete. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up a browser and we're gonna go ahead and Google your motherboard manufacturer, the exact motherboard, because we want the exact BIOS file for the exact motherboard. So in my case, we're using an Asus Tough Gaming A520M Plus Wi Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that. We're gonna only go to the manufacturer's website. Don't go to any other website. Uh, we only wanna download and trust you know, something off of uh, these motherboard manufacturers website. So here's Asus right here. This is the exact motherboard that I have in our $500 gaming PC. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go to support. And then what we wanna do is uh, drivers and tools in our case. And then we're gonna look for BIOS and firmware. And then here is the latest BIOS file right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and download this latest BIOS file and we're gonna download it. We'll go ahead and drop it into the USB drive. So this is a zip file, it's compressed. We wanna extract the files out of the zip file. So we're gonna right click, extract all, and then we're just gonna go ahead and drop all these files of the folder right into this flash drive again. Here's the BIOS file for my motherboard. And if you're gonna go ahead and uh, just go ahead and go into BIOS and update it this way, keep this BIOS file the same. Don't do this BIOS renamer. We're gonna do the BIOS renamer only if we are using BIOS flashback. So in my case, I am. My motherboard supports BIOS flashback. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well, I'm gonna run the BIOS renamer uh, to go ahead and rename this BIOS file for BIOS flashback. All right, looks like it renamed it. Depending on the motherboard manufacturer, they may have a different process for the BIOS flashback. So make sure you look at how MSI wants to do it, Gigabyte and uh, maybe ASRock and all that stuff. So you can see here on Asus website, it says before running the BIOS flashback tool, please rename the BIOS file to this using the BIOS renamer, which we already did. What we wanna do is we wanna grab that BIOS file and put it into the root of our USB drive. So I'm gonna grab this, we're gonna go ahead and just cut, and then we're gonna go ahead and paste. So we have it right here. Go ahead and close that window, and then we're gonna go ahead and plug this USB drive into the PC we just built. You're gonna take your USB drive and you're gonna plug it into a USB slot that has BIOS over it. That specific port is used for BIOS flashback. So on this motherboard, it is the lower left one. 
Make sure your motherboard cable is plugged in. PSU is plugged in and turned on. Next, hold down the BIOS slash back button until it starts blinking. Then you can let go and then make sure you don't power off anything while it's blinking. That means it's going. So when it's finished, it will stop blinking. This process might take some time, a couple minutes. I know sometimes, I think I read one time where it said, you know, even up to like five to eight minutes. It takes a while. So if it's still blinking, I'll let it do its thing. Don't interrupt it. Go ahead and keep it going. All right, it stopped blinking. This motherboard took about a couple minutes to finish. All right, unplugged the USB device and uh, we powered it on. And you can see right here, uh, the BIOS version is 3002, 3002. And that's what we wanted because that's what we downloaded. That was the file. And so we know it's updated. So let's go ahead and get in BIOS by pushing the F1 to run the setup. All right, we're in BIOS right now, so we're gonna look at our CPU temps up top here. We're gonna make sure that it's gonna stay at a consistent temperature. Uh, if we had a problem, if like the cooler was not properly seated or uh, you didn't put thermal paste on it because it wasn't pre-applied and you forgot, whatever. Um, we just wanna make sure that the CPU is not continually rising because that would indicate a problem. So it's maintaining the cooler. It's cooling it off right now. Uh, it sees our two sticks of RAM. And right here's where we would enable uh, or increase our RAM speeds. We're not gonna do that quite yet. Uh, here, it looks like we have our fan profiles and we can change uh, the fan curves here. Uh, so right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same USB stick that you use for the BIOS update, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug this into the other PC that we used. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna download the Windows Media Creation Tool. So now what you can do is, you can either do Windows 10 or Windows 11. Um, I'm gonna do Windows 10, so I'll follow along with the prompts for that. Windows 11, you just search for Windows 11 Media Creation Tool. Windows 11 is pretty similar, setting it all up. So we're gonna go up top here and we're gonna search for Windows 10 Media Creation Tool and make sure you go to Microsoft's website. And then what you wanna do is you wanna to do to create Windows 10 installation media download now. And here you can kind of save this into your downloads. Then you're gonna go ahead and run that. Go ahead and accept that. We wanna go ahead and select installation media USB flash drive. I'm just keeping this checked because I know the architecture, I wanna do 64-bit Windows 10. And so wanna make sure you do 64-bit. Hit next. And then we want a USB flash drive, not an ISO file. It already sees our USB device, hit next. And then let it do its thing. It's preparing the USB device right now. All right, it's finished. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just click finished right here. So I'm gonna plug this from the computer and then we're gonna plug this into the USB slot on the computer that we want to install Windows 10 on. All right, we're back on the computer. We plug the USB device in. And so we're gonna get out of here and we're gonna reboot, so it boots into the USB device. So we're gonna click on save and exit to reboot. And then it should load into the USB device. All right, you get a screen like this, and basically we just go ahead and follow the prompts through here. Uh, we want, here's our language, time, all that stuff. Click next and install now. And then we're just gonna follow the prompts here. Here's where you can enter the product key if you want. Uh, I'm gonna say I do not have a product key. You can do that later. And then here's where you can choose like Windows 10 Home, uh, Education Pro. So basically you can do Home. And then if you want a little bit more features, I'm gonna choose Pro. I accept the license term. So we're gonna go ahead and do Custom. And then here is our NVMe device here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. And then make sure you select, if you have multiple drives in here, make sure you select the right one where you want your windows to be. Typically you want your windows to be on you know, some of the fastest. Uh, so if you have a SSD or an HDD, um, or if you have your NVMe, you wanna choose the fastest one. So this one's NVMe. And then let it do its thing. Go through all this here, and we'll just wait till it's done. All right, choose a region, choose a keyboard, add a second keyboard, skip. I'm set up for personal use, next. Here you can add account or create account here. I'm just gonna do offline account and then we'll just do limited experience. Put in your name, I'm just doing temp. Password, let's, I'm gonna keep it wide open. You can do a password, obviously, lock it up. And you can do whatever you want here, but I just turn all of these off and hit accept. And customize your experience. I'm gonna go ahead and skip because I don't want any of the ads or anything like that. And then I don't want Cortana, so not now. During this process, I plugged in an ethernet cable into my ethernet port to get on the internet, whatever it's needed. So you run through the wizard and if it connects to the internet to download updates, or sometimes it asks you uh, to get on a network connection. So I have an ethernet cable, plug that in if you're able to. If not, and if your motherboard has like integrated Wi-Fi, meaning that it came with like a little antenna that you plug into your motherboard, connect that up. So uh, this can connect to your Wi-Fi, your home Wi-Fi network. Uh, if you don't 
don't have this, then uh, if you got like a USB dongle, a Wi-Fi USB dongle, you can plug that into to try and connect up to the internet. Now you can continue through this process and run in offline mode. And then when you get into Windows though, you're gonna wanna be able to connect to the internet at some point. So if you don't have the drivers uh, for that wi you know, Wi-Fi or the USB Wi-Fi device, then you'll have to get onto the computer where you downloaded the Windows Media Creation Tool or another computer and get those drivers for your Wi-Fi device downloaded on that computer, bring it over to this PC and install them so you can get on the internet. So if that's your case, shortly I'm gonna show you how to get to your motherboard's website to get in on that other computer, download those Wi-Fi drivers, get them on this computer and installed. All right, Windows is installed right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna check for Windows updates to go ahead and get some of those common drivers, security patches, and then we're gonna go ahead and download and install some of our part drivers, and then we're gonna go ahead and install any kind of other software we need. Then if you have an ASUS motherboard, uh, it wants you to download Armory Crate, it's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We can just download it manually here, but I'm gonna say yes. Uh, here's Armory Crate, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. You can take a look at this later. Here's where you can go in and uh, you can set fan speeds and stuff like that. And then uh, you can do all kinds of things. You can do uh, the RGB, Aura effects, you can sync all these. Here's your, here's your devices that we can sync and uh, we can set all the RGB in here. So right now we're gonna minimize that. And then one of the first things I do is I'm going to go to Windows and then I'm gonna just type in check for updates. And so what we wanna do is we wanna run Windows updates and we're gonna go ahead and check and get all the Windows updates. It's gonna get some drivers. It's gonna get all these things here that is needed. Uh, so usually that's the first thing I do is just go ahead and run these Windows updates. And then we wanna download and install them. It's gonna reboot probably. I'm gonna go back in to check for updates again. We're gonna make sure that it is all up to date and it is clean, there's no other updates. So we'll just keep doing this until, it's, until we're done. All right, go ahead and do the first restart. I'm just gonna run through Windows updates. Do not turn your computer off while it's updating right now. Kind of screw some things up. Just let it go do its thing till it gets back into Windows. And then we're gonna check for updates again. What you can do now, what I like to do, you can use Edge. Edge is a Chromium browser, which is uh, decent. Um, I like Chrome, syncs my bookmarks and all that stuff. Uh, you can also download Firefox and download a browser. Also what you can do is you can download antivirus. Um, to kind of protect your computer. You don't want to be clicking on links and stuff like that and get your computer hacked or get some virus on it. So download antivirus if you want. Avast, A-V-A-S-T is a free one that you can use or you can pay for something. I'm going to download Chrome, download, and then uncheck this, download Chrome. Go up here, Chrome setup. Yes. And so what I'm gonna do now, all right, we need to install drivers for our motherboard. So we're gonna search for the exact motherboard that you have. So um, in my case, it's the Asus Tough Gaming A520 Plus Wi-Fi. And then, so we wanna go to only the manufacturer's website. You wanna go anywhere else. Uh, and then you wanna find the support tab. Usually uh, they'll find, uh, they'll have some sort of drivers and tools on there. And then we have a Windows 10 operating system. We're switching that. And then here's what we want to install. Um, we're gonna to want to install LAN, which is your Ethernet port. So we're gonna go ahead and download this. And then we're gonna do wireless. We obviously want to do wireless. And then uh, we're gonna do chipset. And then audio, this is the Realtek audio driver if you have things plugged into the motherboard. Uh, what you can do, you can just rock kind of like uh, the natural Windows um, you know, environment with controlling the sound. Uh, Realtek, some people don't like, you know, additional, like, I don't know if it's considered a bloatware. Um, but anyways, Realtek will give you more features. So if you want to possibly have more features, things that are plugged into the motherboard, go ahead and download this. And then VGA, we wanna go ahead and download VGA. And then also we wanna download Bluetooth. Um, I am not gonna do the TurboLAN utility. I don't really need that. And then I don't need the SATA one. So basically in this case, I'm just gonna download all those ones that I recommended. Each one of these files are zip files, so we want to extract them, they're compressed. So we got to right click on each one and select extract. Once you extracted the files, they'll show a folder right here and it'll bring up the files right here. And then if a couple of them want you to reboot, what I do is I just hit exit. I don't reboot you know, after every one. I'll just uh, install all of these and then I'll reboot once, once they're all installed and then that will be fine. So do this for each one of these. 
And if you have a GPU in your computer, now you can install the software and drivers for your GPU. Like if you have Nvidia, like a 30,000 series, like 3060 or 40,000, 4070 or something like that, you can install directly from Nvidia's website, the drivers, or you can install the Nvidia experience that has a little bit more on there that where you can get the GPU uh, drivers. And then uh, if you have an AMD GPU, you can uh, go ahead, go to the website and you can find the exact uh, GPU that you have and download the software and drivers for it. I believe their software is called Adrenaline. But if you're following along with this $500 PC bill with integrated graphics, we don't have a GPU. So we're going to not go ahead and install any of that GPU software and drivers. Obviously, we don't have a GPU. We'll install that once we get the GPU. Another thing that's very important that a lot of people forget to do if you have a higher refresh monitor than the default 60 hertz. And you can do this within Windows or you can do it within your GPU drivers. Right now, I'm going to do it within Windows. I'll show you uh, Windows 10 display settings. And then you go down to advanced display settings and then refresh rate is default here in about 60 hertz. We're going to want to increase that to what our monitor can handle, which is 120 hertz. Very important. So let's reboot right now after we installed all those drivers. All right, now that we have all the drivers and software installed and before we stress test, I want to go ahead and increase our RAM speeds to our advertised speeds in BIOS. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reboot here and then we're going to go ahead and hit the delete button while it boots up and keep hitting the delete button while it's booting and that will get us into BIOS where we can increase our RAM speeds. All right. We're in BIOS. So as you can see right here uh, in the ASUS BIOS, we have kind of like their little simple menu, easy mode basically up here. So where we increase RAM speeds, we're gonna go ahead and we want to see this DOCP, uh, or you can also see XMP, it's basically the same thing. And so we just wanna switch that profile to basically enable that, and then that will get us to our 32 speeds right here. Another way you can also do it too is you can kind of go in this advanced mode right here, and then you want to go into the AI tweaker, and then you can go right here uh, and select DOCP. Normally it's on auto, and then you can go in here and you can select DOCP, and then it will get this uh, advertised speeds that we are, it automatically detect 3200, and then we're gonna go ahead and select that, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get exit, and then save changes and reset. This is all the changes that that made. Hit okay. All right, we're back into Windows, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just gonna check that task manager, go to performance, and then memory right here, you should see speed, 3200 megahertz. So we got our advertised RAM speeds now. Easy. Now we wanna stress test our PC to make sure that it's not blue screening or overheating. These are symptoms of hardware instability, uh, you know, where it's basically blue screening, or if it's overheating, maybe your cooler is not quietly seated right or thermal paste, uh, you know, make sure you applied thermal paste. If it wasn't pre-applied, did you put some on? Did you put enough on? Is it, you know, even? Cause you don't wanna run into these instability problems or blue screening when you're in the middle of a game, headshotting noobs, am I right? All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna download a tool called HW info 64 I really like the monitoring of this one um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to their website here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and fastest fast CDN and we're gonna go ahead and download not the beta I'm just gonna go ahead and do the, the installer the one that's in production and then we want sensors only so we're gonna go ahead and hit start all right and so this pops up is the beta one do not check I uh, notify about beta version, so I don't want that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So we're gonna check out the CPU right now and see the current temp right now is about 41 degrees with the air cooler. And then um, the maximum we got up to is about 48. So you can see, here's what we wanna look at, the CPU TCTL and TDI. So we're gonna go ahead here and monitor our CPU. Um, I'm gonna do armor crates. We're gonna set up full speed while we test. And so now that we got kind of our monitoring using HW Info, I'm gonna go ahead and download Cinebench. Cinebench, tech spot, load options. Don't click on all these download. These are ads right here. I hate it when they do that. So here we'll start out with single core. We'll go ahead and click start. So we'll let this go for about, I think 10 minutes is the default right here. We got our HW Info on right now. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of monitor our temps for our CPU here. So it looks like right now we're at about 48 degrees. 
All right, the single core finished. Didn't blue screen or anything like that. And it looks like the max it got was 52 degrees. Not too bad. We're not looking for high scores here. Uh, so we're gonna run uh, the multi-core now and see how it does. We're gonna reset the min-max values on our HW info. Multi-core is gonna run a little hotter because obviously you have all the cores being stressed right now. So it's gonna run a lot harder than it did the single core. All right, multi-core is done, and looks like uh, we got about a max of 87 degrees, so that's pretty good, not too shabby for using an air cooler and stuff and doing multi-core. So now we're done with that, no blue screens or anything like that, so now we're gonna go ahead, and I'm just curious to see how uh, the resolution uh, will do using you know, the APU here, uh, which is integrated graphics. So I'm gonna download Heaven, and then uh, we're gonna run a stress test, and we'll see what that looks like once. I'm gonna stress test our graphics right now by using Heaven software. And this is a $500 PC, and it's only meant to play like 1080p gaming. So I'm gonna actually switch my resolution to 1080p. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and test using Heaven. Um, what you might do is that you might have a GPU in here. So whatever you will be gaming at, make sure you set the resolution and the refresh rate to whatever you wanna game at, and then run Heaven to go ahead and stress test the graphics, see how well it does. And so right now we're doing 1080p and then I'm gonna switch the quality on this one to a low. So I set the quality to low on this 1080p machine and it looks like it's not too bad. It's averaging about, you know, 77, 80, 90 frames per second. And this is just a 5600G and in APU integrated graphics on this. So, and so whatever you're gaming at, make sure you set the refresh rate and the resolution before you launch Heaven to stress test it and see how well it does. If you want more features, check out MSI Afterburner software. Not only can you stress test your graphics, you can also overclock your GPU and you can also choose to install a Riva Tuner. Reva Tuner is nice because you can display GPU and system stats in an overlay while playing games and stuff, so you can see exactly what kind of frames you're hitting, the temps, and all that stuff. All right, now to install some games, go ahead and test this bad boy, see how well it does. Game on, have fun.